Hello there, everybody. I hope you're all doing fantastically well. It's Connor. It's the weekend. I hope you've got your beer, your wine, your coffee, your tea, your water, wherever you are. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I hope you just sat there and leisurely getting ready for the weekend, everybody. I'm jetting off home this evening, so for me, the beers have to wait. But uh, I am heading to the Sunderland game. Sunderland! On Tuesday, confirmed today. Can't wait to get back down to Ellen Road. It's been about a couple of weeks and I'm already getting withdrawal symptoms. I don't know how some of you lot are able to keep away. Some of you can't even get down there. I feel so sorry for you. But hopefully, basking in the One Leeds videos can bring you closer to Ellen Road. That's what I hope anyway. Uh, but today we're going to be speaking Coventry City. We're going to be speaking about Sky Sports screwing over. Leeds United. We're going to be speaking about the other teams, the running. As you've seen on the channel, we've been fe we've been featuring the running quite a bit post games, pre games. I want to be speaking about Ipswich, Leicester City, Leeds United, where each team lands. I'm doing research from day day dot really uh, when it comes to Leicester and um, Ipswich Town. Massive games over the weekend. Norwich playing Ipswich in almost the perfect game. The perfect game that we need right now is Ipswich against Norwich at Carroll Road. That is perfect for Leeds United. They've not beaten them in 15 years. 15 years. Even when Norwich were absolutely rubbish at Portman Road, they still couldn't beat them. 2-2. So we are absolutely hoping that this is going to be a great result uh, for Norwich tomorrow. And I'm going to get into, in a little bit, why I think that this could be a very, very, very good weekend for Leeds United. So hold with me here, everybody. We're also going to be speaking about Leicester, Kasabian FC. What's going on with them? How are they fearing? How are they, are they shaping up for the weekend? Because some, some of you guys might not know. I've done the research for you. Don't worry. And what happened with Leeds United last time out? The 1-1 one -one against Coventry. What went wrong? Keep getting your comments in the section below, everybody. How are you doing? Are you chilled now? I hope none of you are going off to a night shift like I know my old man will be doing at the brewery. Uh, listen, listen, it's, it's it's an arduous life, isn't it? Trying to keep up with Leeds United, your family, your job, all that sort of stuff. But I hope I'm going to give you a little bit of joy in this prob probable half an hour live stream with myself. Uh, not chilled at all, says Jake. Uh, yeah, we'll get into that in just a little bit, mate. I'm happy uh, that you are not chilled. Uh, good call, Jamie. I was very sad today. Their memories live on. Uh, good evening, Connor and all. Evening. Uh, rest in peace, Chris and Kev. As always, rest in peace, Chris and Kev. We, you know, every single year on the channel, we uh, pay tribute to uh, two uh, men who went to a football game and didn't come back, which is truly horrific. Um, and yeah, let's hope we can get a win this weekend for Chris and Kev. I'm sure they're watching on. Uh, evening, Connor, mate. Hello, uh, Ricky. Hope you're doing well. Lots of lo uh, lovely comments in the chat as well, everybody. Keep running your comments in. Evening, Connor. Tuna win for us tomorrow. Uh, evening, Connor. Nigel's in the building. Mike says, hi, Connor. Hope you're doing fantastically well. I believe let's all bottle it. Um, despite them having a game in hand, you can't bet against Leeds, Leeds and Ipswich getting automatic promotion. Uh, yeah, as Arthur says as well, Leeds United under 18s last night. Um, fantastic result, 4-3, the through to the FA Cup youth final. We speak about that on the pre-record this morning. Listen, guys, head on over. Watch the pre-record this morning after this if you fancy doing so. A little bit of bonus content. We've got all your one lead stuff as well. Link in the description below. You guys are loving it. Loads more designs on there. So let's get into it anyway. So Leeds United's clash against QPR has been selected for Sky Sports and will now kick off at 8pm on Friday the 26th of April. Are we shocked? Absolutely not. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really care. I really don't. And it's not because I'm, you know, there's going to be fans that are going to are probably booked hotels and they're going to be going down on Friday now, they're going to have to cancel these hotels and these trains. It's awful. Of course, it's awful for, for um, you know, away going fans who were there week in, week out. I just feel like it's just a prerequisite for Leeds United now, though. Every single week, it's the same thing. Every single month, it's the same thing, I should say. They just rearrange our games. We've been on Sky a ridiculous amount this season. I think I saw a stat saying we've been on on Sky more times than about 11 or 12 Premier League clubs this season. Just shows the mass um, interest in Leeds United, even though we're the most hated club in the country. People still want to watch us fail. So listen, and we've got a massive global audience, haven't we? And some of you are in the building right now. But yeah, Sky have changed our fixture. It was, it was supposed to be on a Saturday. It's now on a Friday evening. But let me tell you why I'm not too concerned. Leeds have a nine-day rest 
a nine-day rest before that game. And Ipswich Town, they have a significant rest beforehand as well. But I don't think they've got the plethora of options we have in terms of squad depth. And, and the team should be back to nearly full health by then as well. But also, Ipswich Town also have games on the 27th and 30th. So Ipswich actually, between games, have a lesser period of recovery than what Leeds United have. And they are away for both of those games. Ipswich Town, I know Leeds are as well. Um, you know, QPR and Middlesbrough. But listen, um, it's it's not as bad. I don't think there's a four-day recovery. Leeds should be okay there. We should be absolutely fine. And I'm personally, I'm more bothered about it affecting the fans. Of course I am. Because, you know, they're the paying customer and Sky just don't give a you-know-what about the fans. But from a Leeds United perspective, like I've, I've seen a few people talk about online, oh, they're going to be fatigued, they're going to be knackered. It's no excuse. It's not. They're, they're playing twice a week anyway. And with a nine-day rest period beforehand, I sh we shouldn't be concerned about the team's fitness, really, everybody. Um, not, not, not for me. Um, but I do think it's obviously going to be a little bit difficult for those the, those those paying fans, of, of course. And I understand that. Um, uh, let me just refresh here, everybody. I'll be with you in two seconds. Keep keep liking the stuff. Hold on a sec. Bash, and we're back. Uh, let's have uh, uh, a couple of your comments. Uh, yeah, we're going to get into uh, Ipswich's stuff in a little bit. Want Leeds and Ipswich to go up top two. Evening, pal. Hey, Jay. Uh, why is it bad that we keep getting uh, picked for Sky? It's more just about fans just having this constant churn at uh, James really when it comes to booking things when it comes to having to get to places late it's normally affects away games as well late on and and then it affects train services home as well some fans haven't picked haven't haven't decided to get you know certain modes of transport which they're now going to have to get it affects the fan massively and and you know play, uh, people in different countries as well time zones it affects them watching the game as well they might have set the week up to watch Leeds United at a specific point I know when I lived in Australia for nearly 18 months I had to get up at a certain point to watch Leeds every single day to then go on a go on a building site for 12 hours a day at 6 a.m. I had to set my time to do that. I had to set my time to then do video content. I then had to set my time to go laboring for 12 hours on a building site. So people have to do these things. So Sky don't give a shit about the fans and they never have done. Hence why Leeds fans sing it every single game. But I'm talking about the players specifically. The players should not be fatigued. They should be absolutely dialed in for this one. And I really, really don't think it should be affecting uh, the players on the day. And Ipswich, as I say, their turnover is going to be more ruthless. So that's a positive, I guess. Uh, Leicester have a worse running because of the game congestion. It's a crazy stat uh, this season. We have only had 12 league games at 3 p.m. this season. Yeah, it's an absolute joke, mate. It's an absolute joke, but it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, I see. Thanks. No problem. No problem. So let's get into a couple more bits of news, everybody. So that is the main uh, talk, really, when it comes to Leeds United, I have to say. Um, Okay, Phil Hay earlier on was speaking on this podcast about Liam Cooper, and I wanted to touch on this in in particular. And this is something that we've all known as Leeds United fans for a long time now. Apparently, there is a there is a common understanding around Ellen Road now that Liam Cooper's contract will not be extended. Now he's thirty two years of age; he's not completely over the hill. If Leeds were to remain in the Championship, right? If Leeds were to remain in the Championship. It wouldn't surprise me if they were to give him a, at least a one-year role in contract extension. I'm not think. By the way, listen to me. Listen. I know some of you will be jumping the gun now going, ah, Connor, you know what you're talking about. I'm not saying I would give him a contract. He, I, I wouldn't be giving him a contract. You guys all know that I wouldn't be giving him a contract. But I am quite surprised right now that, according to reports, according to voices that we're hearing in the Leeds United network, there is no, there is not going to be any option for Liam Cooper to extend his contract. Now, I'm quite surprised... By how ruthless that feels. I am quite surprised by how the sentiment's been thrown out the window there. If these reports are to be, you know, are to be, uh, you know, factual and Liam Cooper, there is an understanding that leads that whatever happens, even if leads are to remain in the championship, touch wood, that doesn't happen. He's not able to stay. I find that. I, I like that. I like that. And some of you may look at that and think, Connor, that is the most frivolous, petty thing to focus in on. What are you talking about? Why are you talking about this on a video? Well, because he is a senior head. He is someone who is the club captain. So I think we have got to talk about it. I think there is a conversation there to be had, a debate, a discussion. And it's so interesting right now that it's known really at Leeds United that there's no chance 
that he's really going to be given an extension. And I think that was solidified, that was compiled by the Watford game. You know, I, I spoke about it quite candidly online. I spoke about it on the videos, how he shouldn't be playing for Leeds United in 2024. And, and I think even against Watford, a team that was in 14th place, I know they had decent players. I know they just got a new manager. But to be looking like you did against Watford in terms of just the centre-back, your turn of pace, your interpretation, your positional awareness, your physicality. I mean, Liam Cooper, who has never been an exceptional defender, had gone down three or four marks in that game. And it was glaringly obvious, potentially at fault for the first one or, or a, a, a culmination of people, but definitely involved. Don't know why he's in the goal for the first one, but he is. Instead of closing down the striker who scored. And the second goal was just kamikaze and comedy. So, interesting. Josh has said it's harsh. Look, Josh, it's. I don't know why it's harsh. I, I, I mean, listen, I don't know if you're saying the, 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 the fact that he's not going to be given another extension. Well, not another extension, but another sort of season at Leeds United it, it is harsh. Or whether or not you think my evaluation of Liam Cooper is a little bit harsh. For me, I want my club to get better and better and better and better. And there is a lot of stuff online at the minute where it's we're talking about Stuart Dallas, we're talking about Liam Cooper, you know, other other players who've been at Leeds United for a long, long time. What, what would you do with them next year? Well, if they're not playing for the club, if they're not offering any real value to the players on the pitch and they're not able to add quality and calibre, we're not a charity. You know, testimonial, all that great stuff. But as a, as a football owner, I'm not just giving him a new contract because we like him around the place. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And you guys know on this channel, I am probably very different and very ruthless in with my thoughts. But I also think I'm fair with Liam Cooper. Like, I really appreciate what he's done, but there's no way on earth I'd be giving him a new contract. I wouldn't give him a rolling contract. You, you know, football, you, you, want, you, you, you have to deserve a new contract as well. The reason you keep Liam Cooper around the place is because off the field, he's a good guy and he's experienced. That's it. Because when he's been put on the field, he's, he's nowhere near it. And I couldn't believe the difference from when he was at Watford, when he was playing uh, in the 3-0 victory against Watford at the start of the season, where they started some good personnel in that side, by the way. I know they were at a different moment, but the stark difference from then to now is mental in terms of regression. So, yeah, I, I, I think... Listen, that he for me, there's there's no way uh, he would be he would be uh, yeah he's, he wouldn't be signing any contract for me next season. But I'm surprised that there is now a notion, there is an understanding at Leeds that yeah that's not happening. And I bet that has been compiled by that Watford performance. Hundred percent bet that. Uh, keep any comments in. Uh, Jack says uh, Coops need to leave a legend, not stay and decline. Uh, Zabir, hello Zabir. Hope you're doing really well. Always lovely comments on here. Thank you, my friend. Uh, is there a coaching role for Liam potentially? And that's that's something Leeds could do for him. A testimonial, putting him through his coaching badges. I'm sure he's doing that right now. But as I say, I think it's quite surprising because he's 32, and there's potential that Leeds don't go up. There's a, there's I'm not saying that there's an expectancy that we do go up, but there's potential that we stay down. There is. You know, there, there is a story here that we don't go up. I don't think it will happen, but there is a story here that that happens. And I'm surprised that the club have just almost eliminated that and said, look, yeah, whatever the outcome is, is, is essentially not staying. Quite surprising. Uh, it's a crazy start. Yeah, we've read that out from Jay. We've read that out. Uh, Coops will be uh, uh, great with Dallas working with some of our youngsters. Would love to see them in coaching roles at the club, but I think they both want to play still, so we have to let them glow, go. I think... I think Dallas is really going to struggle. I think Stu's really going to struggle. But yeah, I mean, you, you, you're six teens, you're eight teens. The ethos of being a Leeds United player, what it means, I think Dallas... I mean, imagine a dual coaching role and if they did really, really well. And if if Dallas and Cooper implemented a Marcelo Bielsa-style structure, woo, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, Ipswich Town, the tracker boys. Kind of Bristolian there, but there we go. Um, massive game this weekend for them. Why are we talking about Ipswich Town? Well, because... In my opinion, it's between us and them who gets that spot. And I know Ipswich are top. I know Leeds are second. I do firmly believe right now, in my opinion, can change. Because believe it or not, everybody, form can change. Woohoo! It's weird, but that can happen. Uh, that's one thing I told you, so Brigade. But, yeah, listen, it can, it can change. I understand that. It can go up. It can go down. I made the point the other day that 
Leicester City are not going to win seven more games because there's no evidence that Leicester City have been doing that in 2024. The form has been in that top four, the worst form of the four. So let's not just have this opinion right now that Leicester City are going to go and just absolutely batter the league. What I will say is tomorrow, let's just focus on Leicester City a little bit. Their only injury at this moment in time, their only slight doubt is Tom Cannon. Leicester City now have a full strength squad. Um, they, they, they were getting everybody back for the Norwich game, but now for this Brum game tomorrow at home, it looks like it's going to be a full Leicester City Arsenal going up against this Birmingham side. Now, do I think that's a big advantage? Of course it is. Little fully fit if we had Nonto, if we had Gruev, if we had Roberts all available now, we'd be absolutely laughing. We don't. We're going to have to manipulate the side to get the best out of everybody. But when you look at that Leicester City side right now, they have all that artillery that we've spoken about all season, being the best quality, calibre and paid side the Championship's probably ever seen. And they have all of those weapons available right now. Excuse the constant war terminology there. But yeah, they have all of those available against a Birmingham side, Gary Rowett side, who literally pose no threat. I, I, I've watched but Birmingham are atrocious. However, the only sort of little bit that we can cling on to is the fact that his team's near the bottom. And this applies for your QPRs. It applies for many teams down there. Sheffield Wednesday, who are scrapping for their lives. Bottom six sides, form-wise, turn into top six sides. It happens every single season. So am I counting out a cheeky 1-0 Birmingham? Absolutely not. Am I counting out a cheeky 1-1? Absolutely not. No way. That is the beauty of football. This can happen. Birmingham City have seemed to survive in the championship every single season somehow. So I'd love to see a little bit of that Brummy magic against Leicester City. Both teams aren't that far apart as well. I don't really think you'd class it as a derby. However, there might be a little bit of tension there. So we're relying on these minimal incremental things that are going to hopefully bolster our chances in getting that advantage this weekend but listen no game in the championship is easy but you do look at the quality between the two and you probably look at Birmingham side and think it's it's almost top level league one and you look at Leicester side and it's, it's bottom level champ uh, Premier League in terms of calibre so we will need lady luck on our side I am fully expecting this weekend even though I've talked about those potentials I'm expecting a big Leicester win this weekend. I'm probably expecting two or three to go in. Jay Stansfield up front for Birmingham just seems to be up front by himself. There doesn't seem to be any sort of creation around him. And every time I've seen Birmingham this season, they've just been really poor. Um, even against Ipswich, to be fair, they've been in the game a couple of times, but then the last 10 to 15 minutes, they've just completely folded. And this is why I don't trust Birmingham City for a full 90 minutes. I just don't. Um, they did also did it against Southampton as well, didn't they, where... Uh, yeah, um, they did okay in that game, but they they just they just got derailed by the quality. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a tough one. It's a tough ask. And with Leicester's full strength back this weekend, I see a Leicester City win. And listen, when we look at the running, I think Leeds and Leicester have the favourable run-ins. Um, and, and, and that's that's we're not taking that away for this weekend as well. So we're hoping and praying that there's maybe a 20% chance that Birmingham can get a win this weekend. Who knows? Uh Coventry will be fighting hard to get into the playoffs. Uh, there are no easy games. Jim, uh, the Quinn, uh, Quinn says smash a like. If you could, everybody, I've not asked so far, uh, please smash a like on the video. Uh, uh, really appreciate it. Jason says, are you scared or we will do a Leeds? Um, no, I, I, we've got it. I tried to do this with the video the other day. Just tried to talk about like the you know these nuances that we all speak about as fans of ah well under Grayson and McDermott and 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 Milinic and, and Gary Monk and, and all these managers, we've done this, 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 and this. You can even bring it back to Bielsa, you know? It's a completely different era. It's a completely different squad. It's a completely different feeling. We can't be comparing this. If we still had Marcelo Bielsa right now and we were about to go up, we could draw comparisons. Of course we could. You know, first season back in the championship, whatever. But you can't do this with Daniel Fark. It's a completely different playing style, completely different personnel. We can't really compare to any other era. So the whole doing a Leeds thing, it's purely based on superstition. It's historical context that Leeds haven't done it before, but records are there to be broken. Leeds have done that this year. 13 wins in 15 
in a calendar year so far. We've never done that before. Nine wins on the bounce hasn't been done since 1931. That was when Frankenstein was Stein was uh, released in cinemas. Uh, we have not beaten Millwall at the Den in my my conscious existence as a Leeds United fan. You know, we've broken a lot of records this season, so they are there to be broken. I think doing a Leeds is almost just that thing where you are just, it's just your nerves building up. It's your nerves building up. Right now, we have a better squad than Ipswich. You know, better manager, I don't think so. But we've definitely got a better squad than Ipswich. We have got a manager who's won the championship twice, though. We've got experience there with Daniel Farker. There's no excuses. We should go up this season. We should go. Up. And we have got to bear in mind, everybody, that we are still one of those three relegated sides. So really, we should at least be in the conversation of going up. And Ipswich shouldn't be favoured over Leeds United at all here. So, yeah, it's a it's a big, big task for Leeds. But I think we're more than capable of doing it. Uh, Leicester's arrogance are their biggest enemy in this running. Potentially, Lars. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Leicester uh, got... Uh, Brum, Plymouth and Southampton. Kev says, keep up the great content. Hard to imagine three uh, top three teams on 100 points. Thanks, Kev. Really appreciate that. Uh, Jay says, um, it feels different to past times. I'm nowhere near as nervous in previous seasons. I've been strangely confident all season, even when we're 17 points off. I think the difference is as well, Jay, and, and everybody, you can't compare to other seasons because the, 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 the the quality of the squad. Do you remember, years gone by as Leeds United fans, my teenage years were tormented by Leeds just having mercenaries in charge of the club and mercenaries on the pitch as well. And, and a nice couple of fleeting seasons in League One and then one nice season in the Championship with Simon Grace and, and, a, and a half decent one with Gary Monk was sort of the the arc of my childhood supporting Leeds United. You know, I was there for Watford. I was there for Besiktas. I was there for Liverpool. I've been there for big, big games, Premier League, Champions League, etc. But really growing up as a teenager, those League One days and Championship mediocrity days were part of my my life. It was awful. 13, 15, 13, 15. There'll be people in here as Leeds United fans who've watched us win league titles. My dad's watched us win league titles, compete in Europe nearly every single year. You know, we've not seen that as the younger fan. Younger fan, I'm 30 years old, but you get what I'm saying. But all of these sort of superstitions that we've built up over the t over times, you can't really do it because you've now got a squad whose quality is so much better than other teams. I'm looking at a Coventry. I'm looking at a QPR. I'm looking at a Middlesbrough. And with the quality that we've had before in seasons gone by with some of these horrendous League One and Championship teams, managers, owners, whatever. When we've been going into these runs, we've been thinking, oh God, no, we're just not going to do it. And we haven't been able to do it because of the quality on the field. Right now, there's no conversation. There's no conversation about quality on the field. We should be battering these teams. These teams haven't been in the Premier League for now on three years like we have. These teams haven't had the parachute payments. These teams haven't got the quality that we've got going forward and the, and the strength that we have at the back. You know, they haven't got arguably the best young player in the division at their disposal. They haven't got a European footballer in Glenn Kamara in the middle. You know, they've not got a Jorginho Rutter who Dortmund came in for. I mean, what we, do you know what I mean? So I think we've got to separate that, separate ourselves from that previous Leeds United hurt and anxiety that were with crap squads crap ownership and a lot of the time crap managers i think it's a completely different era as i keep saying right now ipswich town let's talk let's talk about ipswich um uh european football in kamara come on josh has he played in europe yes or no answer me that back mate um but yeah uh, so l l illness spreading across the ipswich camp nobody likes to talk about uh, illness when it comes to footballers. We all, we all want to see every single footballer get on the pitch and we want a meritocracy when it comes to who's going up, who deserves to go up. But Ipswich are getting battered. They're apparently, according to Kieran McKenna, several players. Now, is he playing mind games? Is he playing mind games? Who knows? He's dangling Derby, 12.30 tomorrow. But one confirmed absence from the starting 11 tomorrow is Kiefer Moore. What has he scored? Seven goals since he's come in. The spearhead of their attack. Ali is definitely a downgrade. Kiefer Moore is that player who's come in. We mentioned him on the channel has potentially been a little bit of an upgrade to, to Bamford in January. Um, he's coming for Ipswich Town and he's been an absolute revelation in many ways. Experience, goals. He's even got himself a couple of assists. Kiefer Moore has been excellent. Excellent for Ipswich Town. And he's got that 
sort of regularity in the lower leagues when it comes to performing Barnsley, Bournemouth and co. So he's done, he's, he's been an excellent addition. He's out. Now, the illness, the massive player we have to talk about, 16 assists from left back. 16 assists from left back. Leif Davis apparently is a big doubt for this one, according to McKenna. And, and as I said, he, he said there's, there's, there's a few a few players or several players, I think he said, who have been struck with the illness in the camp. So listen, there might be players playing tomorrow who are at 50, 60%, but they have to play because they are some of the senior players. We could see Connor Chaplin. We could see Wes Burns who have been affected with illness, but they're playing tomorrow. So they could be playing at 70, 80%. If what McKenna is saying is true and illness has spread through the camp, that is not good. And then you've got more out. And then you've got, uh, you know, then you've got you've got more out. Then you've got uh, Leif Davis out as well. Two massive players. Listen, if you look at Leif Davis and you look at Kiefer Moore, that's a goal in itself. Just Leif Davis constantly whipping the ball into the box. <laughs> and Kiefer Moore potentially being there to nod the ball in or tap the ball in. Very underrated with his feet is Kiefer Moore as well. Ball on the ground. But I, 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 I ultimately think that this is going to be a tough one for them. And do you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to go out on a limb. Norwich, I think Norwich losing and Wagner doing stupid, stupid, tact making tactical decisions that were daft against Leicester City when they could have beaten Leicester. Wagner's got to have learned it's a home game. They've not beaten Norwich in 15 years. I've just been speaking about records being there to be broken. But when you've had the problems that Ipswich have had throughout the week when it's come to maintaining fitness, that Southampton game... Uh, listen, they've had time to recover. Of course they have, but the drain on that game as well, it could it could send them to another level. It could. You've still got players like Sami Ento. You've still got players like Amari Hutchinson. Who is those two are just playing so, so well at the minute. So Ipswich have these duels um, in, in, in the sort of crest. So in the crown, I should say. So, you know, it is going to be a good Ipswich side going there, but Norwich are a good team as well. Norwich have got many points in 2024 and do not let that Leicester result completely get to your head in terms of them not being able to do anything to Ipswich at all, especially with this confirmed news by the boss that Kiefer Moore is out and potentially Leif Davis and others are going to miss the game through illness. That is massive. So real, real positives there. And I'm going to go out on a win and say Norwich win this two goals to nil. I think Norwich are going to dominate. I think they're going to dominate the midfield as well. Gabi Saar is going to do as a solid. He's going to get on the score sheet as well. And I think Nor this is the perfect game for Norwich to come back from. They've lost against Leicester City. They come back. They solidify their playoff hopes, their number six position, by beating their enemy. The Farm Derby. They beat Ipswich tomorrow. I am convinced of it. I really am. I really am. De Ipswich I'm saying this now. Listen, just because I've said it doesn't mean it's ever going to come true. But... I don't see Ipswich winning tomorrow. And I don't say that every week. I pretty much see Ipswich winning most weeks. So I do see tomorrow has been a big, big, difficult one. for I, I, I believe if we went to Norwich tomorrow, I'd be worried, especially with the performance that they put in against us at Ellen Road, where they were very, very, I thought they were very good. One of the best teams we've seen at Ellen Road. So if that team turns up and they, they hate Ipswich so much, they couldn't stand Ipswich going up and they would love, love, Kevin Keegan, they would love it if not only they beat them, but they sunk Ipswich Town into third and then they played them over two legs in the playoffs. What an accomplishment that would be for Wagner and Norwich City. Um, we'll wait and see how that one how that one turns out. But yeah, it'd be, it'd be fascinated, uh, fascinating to see that one. Um, keep getting your comments in, everybody. Really interested to hear what you say. Uh, Going to watch the thriller at Rotherham versus Plymouth tonight. I'm not, mate. I will not be watching that. <laughs> Uh, Connor, how do you think the players will cope with the pressure of the run? I think they'll be fine, Dave. I think they'll be absolutely fine. I don't think there's going to be any problem there. Uh, jinxed it now. Yeah, could be right. Sarah wants to play for Leeds in the Prem, so he will net, net a couple. Exactly. Um, Renda says Norwich were rubbish against Leicester, but if that is any game to bounce back from, that's the one. And we forget, Norwich played Ipswich when Norwich were horrendous. I, I, I can't remember the stat, but they'd won up to the Ipswich game. They'd won barely any any games. Obviously, it was single digit. They, they were terrible. Many injuries as well going into that one. And they went into that game and we were all looking at it and we were thinking, wow, well, you know, for standing back and obviously nothing had been confirmed at that point in terms of standings. And it hasn't right now, obviously, but, you know, Ipswich are very close to promotion right now. But at that point, nothing had been confirmed and no one was close and, and, and really predicting anything. But that game, 
you were expecting 6 0, 4 0, 5 0, 6 0, with where Norwich were at, where Ipswich were at. 2 2 at Portman Road. One of the only teams to take a point off Ipswich at Portman Road this season. There's your crumb of comfort. Right now, the teams are much closer. It's a, it's the, I think, I, I couldn't pick right now. If you're to give me, apart from Leeds United, but we've already played them twice and battered them twice. If Ipswich are to play one team in the division, right now, this weekend, I'm picking one team and that's Norwich away. I'm not picking any other team. Obviously, taking us out of it. I'm not picking Leicester. I'm not picking Southampton. I am picking... I'm picking Norwich for them to play, 100%. Um, so, yeah, we'll wait and see. Um, uh, late to show, Connor, worth a rewatch. I'd hope so, mate. I'd hope so. Uh, bang on, Connor. I've got Norwich to win 3-1. Yeah, let's get into Cov anyway. We've not spoken about Coventry uh, at all. So, the last time we played Coventry, uh, Jed Spence uh, played, which, which I found very, very interesting in that game. Obviously, it just shows you how much has changed since then. Um, they're a physical team. Look, look, it sounds really obvious. Oh, they're a physical team. It's like great analysis, Connor. But every other championship side feels that physical impact from Coventry. They are. They got in our faces after the game, if we remember. It was the goal scorer or the centre-back. can't remember his name. Or there might have been. A, I think it was the goal scorer who was the centre-back. Um, peeled off between Strauk and, and in between Strauk and Archie Gray for the goal, of course. Um but yeah, he started on on Somerville after the game, didn't he? They they got involved with him. Mark Robbins will be encouraging that tomorrow, and Mark Robbins has done a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job with Coventry. And he seems to. I mean, they lost Jokeresh, they lost Hamer, and now suddenly they've got O'Hare, who's who stepped into that those Hamer shoes. They've got Ben Sheaf, who's performing really well across the season. They've got Ellis Sims. They've got Hadji Wright. They are a good Sakamoto, obviously, uh, who, who who put the lovely ball in for uh, Coventry's Coventry's equaliser at Ellen Road and is a constant threat. They have got a good team. They are a good team. And you know what? If you look through Coventry's games, they've not been well beaten at all this season. You know, I was having a look at them uh, when they went to Portman Road. It was very unlucky when they went to Portman Road. A 2-1 win to Ipswich with Coventry right in the game. They drew with Leeds United, of course. Um, you know, they've beaten, they've beaten Leicester at home 3-1. Coventry are a good side. They're a good outfit. And let's not forget as well, we know there was Jokeresh, we know there was Hamer, but they did get to the playoff final last season, you know? So they are no mugs. And Mark Robbins is a real, real quality coach at this level. So this is going to be a problem game. However, if Leeds United are able to come through this game, if Leeds United are able to then go into next week and get a few of these bodies back, I am so confident. I am. I'm so confident going into that that final hur hur uh, hurdle, the furlong. I just feel that this is a game where if we can get over it, if we can get over this game, I mean, aside from Southampton, this is the highest place side we will we will face. So if we can get over this away from home as well, it's a, it's going to be a massive monkey off our back. It is, and um, I, I see I see Leeds going on and and winning pretty much every single game if we're able to get this one done. Because I look at this lot as a big threat. I think they're going to impose themselves on us. They're going to impose themselves on the midfield. I see Callum O'Hare being busy. I think the last game O'Hare played, he was pretty much anonymous. Now he is being touted and, and being sorry being scouted by Premier League clubs, and he's looking like a real real developed player even from that point. So. Yeah, we've got to keep him under wraps. We've now got a little bit of a different team. Obviously, Pascal's out. Obviously, Jed Spence isn't there. But what I will say, as once again a crumb of comfort for you guys, is how dominant we were in that game. The triangles out wide. The absolute superb performance of Jorginho Rutter who just was dropping deep, bringing that ball forward, was going left, was going right. The balance was insane. He was so dynamic. Um, left, right, was getting shots away, um, was feeding some of in for the goal as well. Georgie was brilliant, was absolutely brilliant. And I don't think they've got many people in their team, especially in their midfield, who can cope with a carrier like Jorginho Rutter. So him combining with Rutter on uh, sorry with Somerville on that side, the little triangles as well that we see normally with the left back, Somerville and Jorginho Rutter, that's going to cause them a lot of problems. We normally see those little triangles and Rutter playing that ball in 
just through between the centre-back and the right-back to Somerville, and that is where the damage was caused the other night. That is where Leeds United have damaged teams this season. So what is going to be the plan tomorrow? Well, we've look, we've got the midfield. We know there's not just an, an insane balance there when it comes to Archie and Glenn. So attack, go to Bielsa days, is the best form of defence. Because I don't think we're going to keep Coventry out tomorrow. I still think that number six missing is massive. I don't think we will have this synergy between Archie and Glenn. So I think we will concede tomorrow. But attack being the best form of defence, we have to be ruthless. We have to do an Ipswich. Because I tell you what, everybody, they outperform their XG every single week. If you guys don't know what XG is, not to be patronising, but basically it is expected goals. They are expected with the chances that they have to, to, to hit a certain criteria. Ipswich get above that every single week. And you know why they do that, everybody? Because they shoot from everywhere. They shoot, def deflect switch town, they shoot. People are oh, spawny Ipswich. Who cares? Who cares if they're spawny? The ball's in the back of the net and they're in the Premier League. Who gives a shit? Nobody cares. So I'm not calling them the spawny. I'm not calling them the jammy. I'm coming on here and saying they're opportunists. You've got the ball on the edge of the box. Let's have a strike. I enjoy our little triangles. I enjoy exposing teams out wide. But I'm so sick of seeing Glenn Kamara get the ball in promising positions and passing it when you're getting someone like a Connor Chaplin or even like a Lewis Travis or a Sam Morsey. Sam Morsey for Ipswich, scoring more goals than Glenn Kamara with the technical ability of that Finland midfielder. It's a joke. He should not be scoring more goals than Glenn Kamara. Glenn Kamara has more technical ability in his little finger than Sam Morsey has in his whole body. But Sam Morsey's on about four goals this season because he shoots. So let's try and look, be a little bit more adventurous when it comes to that. I want to see Archie getting on the score sheet again. Do you remember when he had a shot from outside the box? Oh, yeah, against Leicester. Deflected, went in. We went and won the game against Leicester, which was a huge turning point in this running table. Let's shoot more. And I guarantee with the quality in our squad, 95% of those shots will be going on target and it might deviate away from the keeper if it hits a leg. Let's just do that a lot more. And I see Leeds going forward and being a little bit a little bit better and a little bit more promising in those situations. Uh, keep getting your comments in, everybody. Uh, hit the likes. Thanks, Justin. Uh, I'm worried about Ellis Sims and Wright, but confident in Rode on Nampadu. Carl, what do you think they're thinking about Somerville, Rutter, and probably Dan James? Dan James needs to have a better game. His, 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 passing, his passing needs to be a lot better in this one. And, um, and I didn't know that, Sam. I didn't know that. That's a massive boost for Leeds. So there you go. Sakamoto out for the season. Uh, O'Hare is is the larger built one, but he is a little bit Jack Grealish-esque, I think. Um, O'Hare doesn't start for them. Been on the bench last five games. Palmer is ahead of him. Dan, I, I, I know Casey Palmer starts ahead of him. I wonder in this game, this game specifically, when Leeds have that imbalance in the midfield, if you just get a number 10 on like O'Hare. That's, re that's the reason I'm saying this. I bet O'Hare starts. Could be wrong. But I think that technical ability just in front of our front four without a number six, I am predicting Callum O'Hare starts this game. I don't think Casey, I think Casey Palmer's more dynamic. I think he's he looks a lot fitter in the game than someone like O'Hare. But O'Hare has that ability to conjure something out of nothing. And I feel in that number 10 spot, getting in between our midfield and the defence, that's where he's going to cause damage. We'll wait and see, though. It could be Casey, you're right. Um Hi, Connor. Uh, just smashed. Uh, everyone just smashed a like for you, bro. Thanks, mate. Uh, Leeds will win easy. It's Coventry, not Man City, for goodness sake. Yeah, it's not. And, and, and you're right. And I don't think there should be there should be so much, uh, you know, not, well, praise really for Coventry. They've done really well, but relative, you know, we should be beating them. We should be beating them. We shouldn't. I'm seeing a lot of you guys. And I said not long ago on the debrief that I was a little bit worried about the running and, I've kind of checked myself a little bit and thought, well, what will be will be because we should be winning these games. We should be winning these games. If we finish the season on 103 points and we miss out, well, what more could we have done? But do I think Leeds can get to 103 points with the amount of fixtures we have left? I do. I just think we're good enough. Um, you can't have Chrysensio Somerville being looked at by Liverpool, Jorginho Rutter being looked at by Bayern Munich and Dortmund, apparently. And having cheat codes like that in this division and be worried about other teams' players so much. Imagine what they're feeling about our players. That's what you got to look at. So, 
yeah, we'll wait and see everybody. Um, let me know uh, what you think in the comment section below. Uh, Gruev uh, in or out, pal, says Marvellous Matty. I think he's going to be out for this one, mate. He didn't sound good from what Farka was saying. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Guys, go check the video from earlier on as well. There's other, there's nearly a thousand of you in the building. Check the video out from earlier on if you, if you want to see some bonus content as well. Well worth it. Um, Leeds got a, a, a basically captured a Sunderland player, which is really interesting, actually. There's some more Archie, Archie Gray bits in there. Please like the video. Really, it doesn't show on the algorithm, everybody. And if you're enjoying the live streams, make sure you like. We'll be back here with your instant match reaction tomorrow live again um i'm trying to get radio one lead started as well where we get loads of you guys on on the after show stuff the talk show-esque thing so make sure you check that out you want some merch link in the description below everybody it's not gonna buy itself make sure you do so better than the tat at the club um, and i'll be there sunderland tuesday night and and i hope i see a lot of you there guys it's been an absolute pleasure if you have just joined make sure you watch the replay watch all again let me know what you think in the comment section below you want to head on over to patreon see some bonus podcast stuff do so link is in the description below guys it's been an absolute pleasure hope you've enjoyed it's been a fantastic one from me leeds are going to go above ipswich this weekend everybody leicester are going to prosper as well and i think by the end of the weekend it's going to be a leicester ipswich top two let me uh, a leicester leeds top two let me know what you think everybody and i'll speak to you in a bit cheers